Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. This video is going to be a whistle-stop tour of everything you need to know about fungal nail infection, also known as onychomycosis. The video is going to cover the following areas, so if you want to skip ahead to any of these sections, you can do so now. And please remember to hit the thumbs up and like the video for me if you find this content useful. I've also included some self-assessment questions at the very end of the video, so please stick around for those. So fungal nail infection can involve any part of the nail or the entire nail unit, and that includes the nail plate, the nail bed, and the root of the nail. And although toenails and fingernails can both be infected, toenails are seven times more likely to be affected than fingernails. So what causes it? Well, infections caused by dermatophyte and non-dermatophyte molds and yeasts such as candida species. Dermatophytes are responsible for around 90% of cases. And that's important because the cause of the fungal nail infection will influence treatment and management options, which I'm going to discuss later on in the video. So risk factors for developing infection include ongoing fungal skin infection, as well as psoriasis, diabetes, peripheral arterial disease and immunocompromised states, as well as repeated nail trauma and things such as occlusive footwear. So let's briefly talk about signs and symptoms. So you should suspect a fungal nail infection if the nail looks abnormal and is discolored. There might be white or yellow streaks along one side of the nail, and there can also be thickening of the nail, as you can see in this photo on screen here. There might be white or yellow spots, and there could be complete destruction of the nail. There could be also associated paronychia, which it could suggest a candida infection, and you can see a photo of that here. In terms of history and examination, well, if you're a doctor or a health professional, what do you need to be asking your patient if you suspect a fungal nail infection? Well, you need to ask about symptoms such as pain and discomfort, as well as difficulty wearing footwear and walking. You can also ask them about the psychosocial impact and any comorbidities like we discussed earlier. You can ask them about risk factors for infection and if there are any household or family members infected. If you want to, you can classify the type of fungal nail infection and then you want to go on and examine it. One of the most important things to do if you suspect a fungal nail infection is to arrange nail clippings or scrapings for microscopy and culture, which can help confirm the diagnosis as well as the underlying cause for it. It's important to do this before you start treatment because that's going to influence the choice of treatment. So now we've talked about the signs and symptoms as well as risk factors, let's have a discussion around the initial management of fungal nail infection. Well, first of all, you want to advise the patient on self-care strategies such as keeping keeping nails short, wearing non-occlusive footwear, as well as treating associated fungal infections around the foot. You've then got a couple of different options to treat the fungal nail infection, depending on what's causing it. So the option of topical antifungal treatment, if there's early or limited superficial dermatophytes or candida nail infection is one option. If the initial measures such as the nail lacquer are not successful, then you can think about appropriate oral antifungal treatments. These can be things such as tabinafine, which is first line for confirmed and dermatophyte infections. Itraconazole is another medicine that can be used for candida or non-dermatophyte infections, but that would be off-label, meaning it's not usually licensed. There are other options if those two medicines are not working, and usually nail regrowth should be reassessed after three to six months after you start the treatment to see how the patient's getting on. If there are signs of treatment failure, you might need to think about managing any underlying causes. You might want to resample the nail clippings and scrapings for fungal microscopy and culture, and you want, might want to combine the treatment with both a topical as well as oral antifungal agent. If all of these options are failing in primary care, then you might want to think about referring to a podiatrist. And that can be done if you've got thickened toenails that are causing discomfort when walking. There might be nail trauma due to the patient's footwear. You could have deformed nails which traumatize the adjacent toes. You may also want to think about referring to a dermatologist, and that can be if a child is infected with a fungal nail infection. This is important because most cases of fungal nail infection involve adults rather than children. You may also want to do this if the diagnosis is uncertain, you failed treatment in primary care, there's coexisting nail disease such as psoriatic nail disease or lichen planus, the person may be immunocompromised. So if you, depending on the clinical judgment of the case, seeking guidance and referral and input from dermatology could be very helpful. 
Thanks again for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please remember to subscribe, leave a comment below. There's also lots of extra helpful resources and extra reading in the description box below. Before we finish, here are some quick quiz questions for you to test your newfound knowledge on. If you write the answers in the description box below, I'll be sure to get back to you with the answers. Thanks again for watching and until next time, bye.